Hi friends, thank you for all of the kind com- <laughs> blah blah. Wow, this is really early to start screwing stuff up. Thank you for all the kind comments about my grandma. They're very sweet, very nice. I obviously love my grandma. Hope you can tell, my knacky, as she would point out. And she was very touched when she read all those, so. Good, good little community I got here, proud of you. The blackberry wine is done. It's bottled, it's tasty, it's good. Oh, I'm so glad I checked that. I was, uh, I just had a little intuition that told me to make sure the camera was still recording. And good thing I did, because it was not. Let us review the recipe, the stuff that went into this wine. I know it's only been a handful of days since the previous video was published, but you may have forgotten. So we're gonna take care of that. 1300 grams, or roughly three pounds of blackberry pie filling. 5.5 pounds of blackberries, one vanilla bean, 1.5 pounds of white table sugar, one gallon of spring water, 1.3 grams of go firm, and 1.5 grams of fermido times two, and one gram of Lauvin QA23 yeast. We began this wine on November 1st of 2021, so it's been some time, which was pretty convenient because now I can publish these two videos, part one and two, within a week of each other. So this may just be a one-time thing. Hope I mean, hopefully not, but we'll see. A quick aside here, this was way too full, which I discovered about two days in. It kept continually blew into the airlock, mess, made a mess everywhere. So I had to just scoop out like an inch or two of that goop that floats to the top. A lot of fruit as well. And so unfortunately we lost out on what that would have contributed to the flavor, but that's just cause I got greedy and I put too much stuff in here. First rack came about November 9th. Not about, that's the exact day. November 9th, 2021. Only eight days for fermentation. That's pretty cool. The first step here was to remove the big bag of fruit. As far as I'm concerned, those brewing bags are single use. I have not found a way to clean them, especially when you're dealing with black or red or blue fruit that stains the bag. So I just throw this away after using it, which is what I did. But first, before I threw it away, I took it out and I put it into a strainer. Okay, and then you have that strainer kind of affixed atop some sort of bowl and you let the wine drain out of it. Okay, because there's still, you know, at least a cup worth of wine in that bag that I didn't want to just get rid of. You do oxidize that wine just a little bit because it drips out of the strainer. What are you gonna do? It's, it's just a little bit. Give the wine like two minutes to drip out of the bag and then it's pretty much done. And then you just pour everything you caught back into the bucket. I didn't scoop out the bigger chunks of fruit with the strainer. I just didn't want to get them caught in my airlock. You could eat that fruit for a quick buzz, but that'd be pretty gross. <laughs> so I would not suggest doing that. Then I siphoned the wine using an auto siphon out of the bucket into a glass carboy. I have two containers here I'm siphoning into, the one gallon glass carboy that we all know and love, and then a repurposed glass jar, formerly had juice in it or something, before the overflow. Cause I knew we'd have more than a gallon of wine here and I didn't want to waste anything. However, once I siphoned it using our handy dandy auto siphon, I only got one gallon worth the stuff. So I didn't have to actually use that overflow, but it's, it's better to be overprepared than underprepared. Unfortunately, there was so much sediment at the bottom of the bucket that we lost a lot of wine on this one. So that'll be, that'll come up later in the notes for next time where I say we don't use pie filling because that's what made us lose so much product. Final gravity on this was 1.000. So that means our ABV is roughly 12 to 13%, which is right where I like it to be. And already by the end of the day, as you can see, it's already started to clarify the sediment of the fruit and stuff and yeast has started to compact at the bottom of the carboy. <laughs> Second racking was on March 23rd of 2022. So fast forwarding a bit here. By this point, we'd gotten a lot of that compaction. It was basically ruby crystal clear. So it was it was time to rack again, get it off of that inch or so thickness at the bottom. The gravity dropped a bit at this point to uh, 0.996, which is pretty nice. Just slowly fermenting out just a little bit. As for the taste on it at this point, it was very tart, fruit forward, and just a touch of sweetness. Not obviously this was dry. But I was a big fan of it at this point. I liked the fruit forward wines and I so far had achieved that on this one. So I was happy. I racked it into a pitcher as they do on that channel. You know what I'm talking about. And I added a fourth of a cup of sugar just, just for a touch of sweetness to round it out a little bit. Then I racked into another carboy from the bucket and it only filled it up to about the shoulder. And then I ran out of wine and I don't like having that much headspace in my secondary containers. So I added some marbles, some glass marbles, 
The reason you can do that is they don't have any flavor to them, so they don't leach any flavors into your wine. And as you add more and more of them to your wine, given laws of displacement, they push the liquid further and further up. And so I just added marbles until I got the wine, the surface of the wine up into the neck of the carboy. And so that minimizes oxygen. So it's, a, it's better that way. Fast forward just a bit to May 6th, and I decided to add some cinnamon, one cinnamon stick to the wine. Because as I tasted it, I thought this is really, really good, and I wonder if we can get more of a blackberry pie taste. So I just tossed in some cinnamon to see what would happen. Some of these things you have to just learn by trial and error. You do something, and you see what happens. So that's, that's what I did. I finally decided to bottle on May 18th of 2022, which means I left the cinnamon in there for about 12 days. Now, whenever you're bottling, Make sure to sanitize everything, but especially the bottles, the wine bottles. Do it the way that I'm doing it here on camera. You fill it up about however much you want, really. I fill it like a fourth of the way full. You make sure to cover the opening, okay? Otherwise, it'll splash around, and then you just shake it up. Technically, you should do this for about 30 seconds to get full sanitation. I never do that, but don't be like me. Be better. I then racked out of that carboy into a bottling bucket. From here, we can back sweeten, stabilize, and then rack into bottles. It just makes it a little easier to do it this way. Having tasted it, it was still pretty dry and it needed more sweetness as far as I was concerned. So I added sugar at a rate of an eighth of a cup at a time, right? So I just kept adding an eighth of a cup until and tasting it each time until I liked where it was at. I ended up adding, I think, a total of half a cup or four eighths of a cup, okay? Then I stabilized it. For me, that means I added a 16th of a teaspoon of potassium metabisulfite, which is a chemical that inhibits or at least reduces oxidation. And so it extends the shelf life of your wine. And then I added a half teaspoon of potassium sorbate, which is another chemical that coats your yeast cells that may still be in circulation, preventing them from budding and reproducing. So what it does is it inhibits the chances of re-fermentation. It lowers those chances. So both of these combined will do what's called stabilize your wine, allow it to be safe for long-term storage. Because we back sweetened this today, we added sugar. If there is still an active fermentation in these bottles with sugar, they will eventually explode. And that's dangerous and it's messy. So for those two reasons, you got to stabilize one way or another. Another way you can do it is to pasteurize. I just don't do that. It's a complicated thing that I don't do, and I'm fine with chemicals. I don't have any inherent distaste for chemical usage. Everything is a chemical. Anyway, I'll get off of that tangent. At this point, I also judged that it needed a bit of acid. I like tangy wines, okay? I like ones with a little bit of bite as far as the acidity is concerned. So I did some research, and blackberries are predominantly malic acid in their acid profile. So I added a half teaspoon of malic acid to, to match the acid that's in there. And I was very happy with how it came out. The, the acid addition was exactly what I did, exactly what I wanted it to do. And, and once again, like with the cinnamon, some of this is just trial and error. I don't usually work with acid blends. I'm trying to elevate my winemaking game and get better at this. But the only way I can do that is just by trying stuff out and seeing what happens. So that's good advice to you as well. As you learn how to do this, sometimes the only way to learn is to just go by experience. And you make some mistakes along the way, but that's okay. Anyway, this was not a mistake. I was happy with the result. Nice little tang added. Finally, it was time to bottle. So for this, you'll need a siphon. And it's also helpful to have those little attachments that go on to the end of the siphon called a bottle filler. This allows you to essentially move from bottle to bottle without spilling in between because as you press down on the bottle filler, wine flows. And once you pull up, wine flow stops and you can move it into the next bottle without spilling in between. So that's nice, and that's what I used. Bottling is just like racking, but instead of moving into a carboy, you move the liquid into bottles. Now you go on to corking them. For this, you can use any size corks you want. I think they come in six, seven, or eight, if I am not mistaken. The bigger the cork, obviously the less oxygen gets in over time. So I, I like to just use the, the bigger corks. And to do it, you get a ground corker if you have one. They also have handheld corkers. If you have a ground corker though, I'm showing you here. And this is how you do it. You just pop it into that opening and you line everything up with a bottle underneath to make sure it pops into place securely. And then you press down with all of your might until the cork slides right in. At the end of the day, we got four and a half bottles on this, okay? Four regular size bottles and then this swing top half bottle. That half bottle, cause it's halfway full only, you need to put it in the fridge and drink it within a day or two, any longer and uh, it'll just lose its flavor. The taste on this is tangy with cinnamon overtones, okay? I wasn't actually super thrilled with what that cinnamon did. 
it actually reduced the fruitiness of the wine and now it's much more cinnamon dominant not overpoweringly so but it still reduced the fruitiness i was sad about that so next time i wouldn't do that but as i said trial and error this is how we learn i like the sweetness on it definitely it's moving closer to a dessert wine with how much sugar i added back into it but i'm okay with that it's full bodied it coats your mouth and you can't really taste the alcohol if anything it's just a, a backseat flavor Sometimes when you make wines, you taste it and it's like rocket fuel. This one wasn't. So so overall, I'm pretty happy about this. I give it a B minus as a grade. That's a new thing I'm going to do is grade each wine at the end. B minus, okay? In my book, it is hard to get an A, okay? I have high standards for myself with the winemaker. So B minus is pretty good. <music> Notes for next time. How would I improve the process or the recipe? First one is obvious. I wouldn't use cinnamon. Okay. I might use some other spices, other ways of achieving in a blackberry pie flavor profile, but I'm just discovering I don't really like cinnamon. I don't really like it, at least in my beverages, in, in wine. It seems to not do what I think it's going to do, so no cinnamon. Secondly, I would leave at least part of the wine drier to see how it improves with age. Typically, the sweeter you make your wine, the sooner you can drink it, the sooner it's ready and, and tasty, because the sweetness tends to kind of mask any wine faults that may be there that would then improve with age. So if you leave it drier, it will take longer to become really palatable, I guess. But I wanna see what it would taste like in a year's time dry. So, so next time I would leave at least two bottles unback sweetened. Thirdly, don't use pie filling. That was just a silly fun thing I did because I had them lying around, but it didn't do anything and it only created problems. So no pie filling next time. But even given all those things, this was a good wine, which my grandma was very happy to receive. I just gave her all of them because I'm going to be moving. I don't need this wine. And she was very happy. So there you go. That's my first part two video under this new format. I hope you like the whole thing. I hope the layout makes sense. Uh, let, let me Give me feedback. Let me know what you think, though. If there's something I can do differently or improve upon, let me know. Obviously, by this point, you all know I'm, I'm open to correction. Okay? I'm a... Humble open-mindedness is the ethos of this channel, okay? Thank you for watching. Watch all the videos I have ever made. And as always, have a wonderful day.